Number five on this list is the Green Hills Hotel in the town of Ebino. Currently out of business, this hotel hasn't been allowing visitors since it closed down in 1992. The hotel was already under speculation of being haunted simply due to its eerie exterior and its slow corrosion. That didn't stop two men from exploring it last year though and finding something extremely unsettling. The two boys were in search of ghosts at this hotel and wanted to see if any of the rumors were true. They initially noted feelings of anxiety when they entered the building, but that skyrocketed when they got to the 6th floor. Entering one of the guests bedrooms, they found a corpse lying on the bed and staring up at the ceiling. The corpse had long pants on, a short sleeve shirt and grey hair. What makes this story so unsettling though, is that the corpse had been there for such a long period of time that it's still unknown what the gender of the individual was. The body had decayed to such a state that it is thought to have been there for years. How this person got to this abandoned hotel and then died there is currently unknown, but it has reignited the fire that the location is haunted. Right now it's currently off limits and for good reason. Further individuals who have stepped into this hotel have also reported those deep feelings of anxiety that the other two boys did. Perhaps the individual who was found on floor 6 is still haunting those walls to this day. Number 4 on this list is the Ichiro Ryokan Inn. Similarly to the previous entry, this hotel is out of commission, but that hasn't stopped people from risking their safety and visiting it. A once beautiful spot for travelers 30 years ago, this hotel is a shell of its former self due to the suicide that occurred decades prior. The former landlady of this hotel was a kind woman who lived a fulfilling and happy life. Or at least that's what people thought. She killed herself 30 years ago by drinking a fatal amount of poison and dying in the walls of her hotel. Since then though, her spirit has never left. After her death, the hotel attempted to remain open for a few more years, but eventually it had to shut down due to the haunting. This lady's spirit has a grip hold over this place and made it very clear to anyone who entered that they were unwelcome. An apparition resembling her would often be seen in the corridors screaming and crying at the top of her lungs. Many guests reported that a vision of her was stalking them the entire time that they were there and that they felt very unsafe. There was a thought that they would simply tear down this old hotel at one point, but the people in charge heard a ghostly cry warning them not to. To this day, the ruins still stand there completely abandoned except for the old landlady's spirit who continues to haunt the halls. Number 3. Remoji Film City Remoji Film City is one of the biggest film sets in the country. In fact, it's actually one of the largest film complexes in the entire world. I mean, it's a film city. How many other film cities are there really? It's a big attraction for movie lovers who come the world over to see its extravagant displays and exhibits, but also entices paranormal hunters looking for proof of the other world. And there's a little something for everyone here, you know? It's a real family place. So where does the haunt haunting come from? Do the ghosts just love the silver screen? Well, Remoji Film City was allegedly built on an old Nizam battleground. The Nizam of Hyderabad was the ruling caste of the area in the 18th century. Now, if these stories are true and it is built on an old battlefield, then it makes sense that there would be a good amount of lingering evil and restless spirits trapped in the soil that haven't moved on. Dying violently tends to make ghosts. Guests of the film city claim that while visiting, lights will flicker and turn on and off at random. Now that could be bad wiring, but it also could be troublesome spirits. Where things get kind of spooky is the reports of crew members on film sets getting injured under mysterious circumstances. Equipment malfunctioning or outright being destroyed in front of people's very eyes. And these are some of the more common reports of things happening on the cursed set. Women in particular have felt targeted by the ghosts or spirits in the Remoji film city. Actresses have claimed that they felt like they were being watched in their green rooms or even feeling a supernatural tugging at their clothes during filming. Now I'm sure they make all kinds of genres of movie at the Remoji film city, but if you want my professional advice, I think they should definitely consider filming a horror movie there. It sounds like they would save a ton on a special effects budget or maybe they could make a documentary. Do you need to pay a ghost? If you're gonna have a ghost in a movie, do ghosts still have the same workers' rights? Somebody look into that for me. Number two, the Charleville Mansion. We're headed back to Shimla for this next one. It sounds like if you're booking a trip to India to take in the sights and the spirits, Shimla is the number one place to be. Beautiful and filled with ghosts. Once you're done checking out the tunnel, take a trip to the Charleville Mansion, said to be the home to an old poltergeist. 
It's a century old abandoned fort built during the British rule. And its first owner was a British officer whose name has seemingly been lost to time. Probably something like Wilford Brimley. No, that's a different guy. When the officer and his wife moved into the mansion in 1913, they were unaware of the rumors surrounding it. And they just thought they were getting a great deal on rent. A previous owner had already fled the property because of the hauntings that had taken place. They said that there was a ghostly figure that would slowly apparate in the middle of the night and would smash objects and throw them around the house. Now despite this house being haunted, the officer himself didn't personally believe in ghosts. He wanted to test this theory of whether or not there was a poltergeist in his home and so he locked all of the doors in his house and waited. Just sat there twiddling his thumbs, tapping his feet, waiting for a ghost to approach. Well. Lo and behold, after locking all the doors, he heard a crash upstairs and ran upstairs, opened the door and found that this one room had all of the furniture and all of the mirrors just utterly demolished. I think he moved out the same week. They say he moved out shortly after, but I can't even imagine he finished packing his bags. Now the next owner was one Victor Bailey, an assistant secretary working on the railway construction at the time. And I gotta say, there must be some really bad vibes at the Shimla Railway if two entries on this list involve it. Anyway. The Baileys moved into the mansion, and at first it seemed like a great deal. Beautiful mansion secluded away from the rest of the world. Until one day at a dinner party, one of their guests reported that he was talking to a lovely English gentleman. Victor Bailey was a bit confused, and when he went back to go introduce himself to this guest, he watched the man disappear into the room the poltergeist destroyed, just vanished out of thin air. And the Baileys packed their bags and left shortly after. The mansion is now deserted and is a hot spot for paranormal activity. Activity. So, enter if you dare. I actually don't even know if you can go in. Look into that, maybe. <laughs> Number 1. Dumas Beach and We all love a good beach vacation. If you're looking for somewhere sweet to lay back while sipping on something sweet, India is full of some beautiful beaches. But we are not here to talk about anything lovely, okay? This isn't top 5 lovely, although that would be just delightful. I would love to work on top 5 lovely if we're ever going to make that a channel. Maybe you guys are listening. We're going to Dumas Beach, located along the Arabian Sea in Gujarat. The first thing you'll notice about this beach that stands out is the black sand which is already pretty unnerving. Most beaches don't look like that. The local folklore says that Dumas Beach used to be a burial ground for Hindu people. And as such, generations of spirits are ingrained into the sand. Building on this legend says that the reason for the obsidian colored sand is years worth of cremated ash by the burning of the dead eventually overtaking the sand on the beach. So. I don't know, if you're thinking about making a sand castle, maybe think twice about that. Maybe keep the flip flops on too, okay? So what do people say about the spirits out there? Well, it's been said there's a negative aura present in the air, and even just while visiting, tourists and residents say they can feel this sense of dread that something is wrong immediately walking around there. Locals say that the spirits of the dead walk down the beach at night, and visitors claim to hear inexplicable voices, scary laughter, and crying. So if you want a nice, long, romantic walk down the beach in India, just keep in mind that you're gonna have a bit of an audience with you. Some people go so far as to say that there's been apparition, floating orbs seen around the beach. I'll, I was having a bit of trouble finding any photos of any ghost sightings around the beach. People say dogs behave strangely, walking through it, howling and barking. There are some who believe that the animals can see spirits we can't, and this could be evidence of that. Now, the most extreme legends say that the tourists go missing around midnight on the beach, but I want to believe if people kept going missing on a beach, they'd shut it down, but I don't know. I've seen Jaws. I know that's not actually that likely. Number five on this list is the Hu Huan He Guan Opera House. This opera house is located in Beijing and has been standing there for quite some time. These days it acts as an opera house and a museum, regularly putting on various theater shows. However, it wasn't always used for this purpose. The building was constructed over 200 years ago in 1807 and back then it was a home for the poor. It was built by a philanthropist whose intentions were good, wanting to help those in need and give at least a few a roof over their heads. Problem was that the builders didn't do their research well enough because this house for the poor was built directly on top of an ancient graveyard. The spirits of this ancient graveyard weren't too pleased that this building got put directly on top of them and, as you may expect, have been haunting it ever since. A ghostly apparition has never actually been seen here, but hundreds of visitors have heard noises coming out of thin air. The noises apparently sound as if somebody is screaming at the top of their lungs. 
This screaming can happen at any time in any place in this opera house, but it seems like the courtyard is tied the most to these reports. There's even a legend surrounding this courtyard. Locals say that if you pick up a stone and throw it in the courtyard, then this voice will directly scold you for doing so. It seems that this voice that scolds you is very scary to those that do this because there's no reports of anyone picking up a second stone and throwing it again. I suppose all of this should teach you that if you ever intend to construct a big building, do some research on the ground that you're building on before you start. Number four on this list is the Songpo Library. This place is now a library, but like a lot of the haunted places on this list, that wasn't what its initial purpose was. It was initially someone's residence, Wu Sengyu. Wu Sengyu lived from 1612 to 1678 and was instrumental in the beginning of the Xing Dynasty in China. He was a Chinese general for the Ming Dynasty, but in 1644 decided that it would be in his best interest to betray that dynasty and switch sides. He did this by allowing the Manchu army safe passage through the Shanhe Pass, one of the passes passage points of the Great Wall. Had he not done this, the Ming Empire would still be standing and Chinese history would be very different. Betraying an empire and etching yourself in Chinese history takes a lot of time and effort. This was obviously a lot for Wu and balancing family with historical betrayal was a little bit too much for him to juggle. One thing had to give and it was the family. So without so much as an explanation, he abandoned his lover Chen Wanwan. Chen Wanwan, alone in this house and abandoned fell into a deep depression and hung herself in this home. That's right guys, even though this library has a deep history of a traitorous general, it's actually the ghost of his abandoned lover that haunts it. After her death, her spirit never left this place and even when it was converted into a library, she still hung on. It's said that her ghost will occasionally show herself to visitors of this library if they're by themselves. She will have deep bruises around her neck, apparently from the rope that she hung herself with. She will also be crying, except not audibly. Tears will stream down her face, but she'll remain almost expressionless and just stare at those who she appears to. Anyone who has seen her has said that they were extremely unsettled by the vision and can never go back to that library again. Lots of the workers at this library don't last very long either because after they see her, they immediately quit. Her appearance can be very disturbing and for that reason, I don't recommend going to check this library out. At number three, we have the Marode International Hotel in Narita. This hotel is still functioning and can be stayed in if you like, however, I wouldn't advise it. In 1999, the hotel, and more specifically, room 1272, was the site of an amateur mummification. In Japan at that time, there was a cult group called Life Space. One of the key members was a 61 year old man named Koji Tagahashi. After suffering a fall in the bathroom and a bad hit to the head, Koji had to go to the hospital. While he was there, it was discovered that he had a very severe cerebral hemorrhage and needed constant hospital care. Disagreeing with this, he had some fellow cult members, including his son, bring him to the Marode International Hotel and begin a ritual on him that would save him from his ailment. This ritual was named by the group Shaky Pats and had them gently touching his body in an effort to cleanse it. This obviously did not work and Takahashi died soon afterwards. His death was no deterrent though, as this ritual went on for four more months in this hotel room. Even though the smell of rotting flesh and a decomposing body filled the air, the remaining cult members claimed that he was still alive. After roughly five months of ceremonies being performed on this decaying body, the police finally broke into the hotel room and arrested everybody involved. They didn't come fast enough though because five months was long enough for Takahashi's spirit to cling on to that specific hotel room. Now, guests of that room consistently report hearing strange sounds coming from apparently nowhere. They also say that they hear the drops of water or running tap water, but when they go and check the washroom, nothing was left on. After having a dead body decompose for five months in that room, it's no wonder that this hotel is haunted. Number two on this list is the Nakagushu Hotel Ruins. These hotel ruins lie only 50 meters away from Nakagashu Castle. Even though this was supposed to be a hotel, it didn't serve its purpose very well because it's only ever housed one guest. The building of this hotel started roughly 50 years ago in the 1970s against the strong pushback from the Buddhist monks in the surrounding area. The local monks consistently warned the owner of this project to build elsewhere because the site he had chosen was on top of some ancient and sacred graves. 
The monks believed that building this hotel would anger the spirits of these past souls and they would enact revenge on the members of the hotel. The owner of this site refused to heed their warnings and decided to prove them wrong by spending a night by himself in the half built hotel. When people found him the next morning he had completely descended into pure madness, with some even referring to him as being demented. He was so far gone that he had to be admitted to an asylum and treated by professionals. After this incident the building was halted and it's never been resumed. Today the site is full of vegetation and growth and slowly crumbling to the ground from general decay. Locals still believe that it's haunted with the ancient spirits that were angered 50 years prior and it's been ruled off limits for visitors. Number 1 on this list is the Akasaka Weekly Mansion. This spot has got to be the most dangerous on this list. This hotel is located in downtown Tokyo and is considered to be one of the most haunted spots in the country. What makes this place so haunted is just how many atrocities it has become home to. From deaths, to suicides, to even kidnappings, the walls of this hotel have seen some horrific things. Guests here have reported several different unique strange occurrences from their stay. A common report is white mist flowing through the air vents and filling your room. The mist is cold and changes the temperature of that room so you're practically freezing. Guests have also said that figures will appear in their rooms in the night. This can be at the foot of their bed or in the doorway. Sometimes these shadowy figures just stand and watch but some guests haven't been that lucky. One woman described standing up and then having this being push them back on the bed paralyzing them so that they couldn't fight or run away. Another guest describes an incident where they saw a shadowy creature and tried to run to the door. This devilish apparition tripped them to the ground and dragged them by their legs back into the room. They proceeded to attack this individual until they had decided that they had had enough. The person staying in this room came out about this story the next day and showed off her back where she had countless scratches that resembled some strange looking claws. Somebody finally had the bright idea to tear down this hotel, however, instead of leave the area alone, they built another hotel directly on top of it called the My Stays Premier. Similar reports from that hotel have been shared since they switched over. Whether it's the land itself or the horrors that this area has seen previously, something is not right about this hotel in Tokyo. Number 5 on this list is the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City was constructed in the early 1400s for the Ming Dynasty. This palace served as the base of operations for any political ongoings that China was involved in for several hundred years. It was also the home of the Chinese emperors and their families. The complex is massive. Consisting of 980 buildings, 8,886 rooms, and being 178 acres in area. The Forbidden City was listed as a World Heritage Site in 1987 and is no longer used for political business but now acts as a tourist attraction. This palace is estimated to be worth over 70 billion US dollars, which makes it the most valuable palace and piece of real estate on the entire planet. I imagine that when they were valuing this palace, though, they didn't factor in that it's deep. Haunted. The Forbidden City has been home to many Chinese emperors during its existence. During its time, it's seen them partake in a wide array of atrocities. The murder of Chinese slaves has happened countless times. Granted, this hasn't always been done by an authoritative figure, but skirmishes between servants and slaves have happened many times throughout this palace's history. And also, it hasn't just been slaves, but others have been murdered within these walls too. Many people speculate on some of the sinister acts that have happened here, but many of those acts have never been Proven. This leads to the secrecy that has shrouded this place since its construction. Nowadays, this forbidden city is haunted by several ghosts and ghouls. One of the most famous sightings was from a guard. They swore that while they were on duty, they were approached by a lady in white without any face at all. This legend has been echoed by some of the other people over the years, although this lady's origin is unknown. Many people also report the sound of music coming from thin air as they walk through the palace. They also hear the laughter and crying from other women that can't be seen. It's believed that these are the ghosts of some of the concubines that used to live in this palace. The Forbidden City is one of the coolest palaces in the world, but we have to remember that it was forbidden for a reason. Number 4 on this list is Tuen Mun Road. This road is a highway in Hong Kong that links Tuen Mun and Swan Wan. The highway is only 19.4 kilometers long and for the most part is well cut. It was constructed in 1977 and during its short time of being active has developed quite the legend around it. This road is considered to be one of the most haunted roads on the entire planet and that is largely due to the significant amount of death 
that it's seen. In 1978, it had its first fatal crash, and since then, it has amassed massive numbers of accidents. In fact, this road has had hundreds of accidents, with many of them being fatal. Some people blame poor road design, but the surviving victims from the crashes, they blame ghosts. This road is believed to be haunted by a bunch of spirits. It's said that these accidents keep happening because the ghosts will appear in the middle of the road. Upon first glance, people will think that they're about to hit a person, swerve to get out of the way, and effectively cause an accident themselves. The biggest problem with this road is that it keeps getting more and more haunted. Like a virus, the people who die from spirits then become the spirits that are haunting the road. Now Nowadays, there are hundreds of spirits that haunt this road and can appear at any time right in the middle of it causing chaos and death. One of the most notable accidents that happened here was that of a bus in 2003 where 21 separate people died. This highway is a hazard to say the least and one that I would avoid going down if I was ever visiting China. Number 3 on this list is the Chenwei Church. Even though this place is often referred to as Chenwei Church, it's actually just a house that's located in the Dongchen district of Beijing. This place is widely known around China and has gotten the title of being Beijing's most celebrated haunted house. It got public acclaim when a horror movie called The House That Never Dies was released in 2014 and was set at that home. The whole origin of this house is pretty hazy with no official records explaining its exact construction. That being said, many people believe that a British priest was the first to start building it, but never actually finished the job because during the construction, he disappeared. After it never became a church, it was converted into a home for a political party member, but he rarely stayed there. Similar to the Song Po Library, his absence had a deep and dark effect on his wife's mental health, and she inevitably took her own life. Along with the priest's disappearance and the wife's death, three people who were working on the home are said to have disappeared while they were here, never to be seen again. All of these deaths and disappearances have contributed to the stories of this house's haunting. The most commonly spotted ghost here is that of the woman who took her own life. People are very scared of ever seeing her because they believe her ghost had something to do with the disappearance of those three construction workers. Almost everyone who walks by this house, even just on the outside, says that they feel an immense sensation of dread as they do. It's also reported that during the summer months, even if it's scorching hot outside, the second you pass through the doorway, everything gets super chilly, as if the home is void of life and feeling. Tunnels have also been discovered under this house, which just add to the lore and legend of this place. Unlike the Songpo Library, where the ghost will just appear and be disturbing, it seems like the spirits that dwell here are actually very dangerous, and for that reason, it should definitely be off your travel plans if you ever find yourself in Beijing. Number two on this list is the tomb of General Wan. I found an excellent passage explaining the history surrounding this tomb written by Dong Huaxi Weiji. He writes, General Wan Chong Hun is famous for his military command during the Ming Dynasty where he almost single-handedly fought off the Manchu army in the 1630s. Despite the general's loyal efforts to protect the land and the imperial family, devious plots were planted in the emperor's ear, making him suspicious of Wan and thus his life came to a tragic end when the emperor condemned him to death by a thousand cuts. Wan is said to have stated before execution that his soul will always guard Lue Dong Peninsula. Tortured and severed into pieces, the people of Beijing were so upset with him for his accused disloyalty that they allegedly rushed to buy and eat his remains. His head, however, was salvaged by a faithful troop of Wan Wei's who buried it at Guanshu Men, and his family has guarded it ever since. Whether he is seeking revenge or simply holding to his word and guarding the territory, the general is said to have been seen wandering around the area at night. First off, before I even talk about the haunting, I can't even imagine dying the way that Wan did. It's no wonder his spirit refuses to pass on. Not only was he falsely accused, but to die by a thousand cuts, then get tortured, and then have your body be picked apart by the locals, it's truly horrendous. If he is still guarding the peninsula, then all the power to him, but I also completely understand if you need to get revenge after something like that. Regardless of his motives, I imagine that any threat towards this area would cause retaliation from his spirit, so probably best to play it safe and avoid the tomb at all costs. Number one on this list is the Gi Mansion. The Gi Mansion is one of the strangest and most unique ghost stories that I've ever heard. It all started with the Gi brothers after World War II. They decided to move to Shanghai post-World War II in hopes of finding a better life. 
This was the best decision that they ever made because once they got there, they basically won the lottery. In the early days of living in Shanghai, the brothers stumbled upon an abandoned warehouse that was filled with cans of paint. At that time, the price of paint was very expensive and this warehouse was as good as stumbling upon buried treasure. They sold the paint that they found and got a fortune for it. That's when they decided to build this mansion. They didn't stop at just spending their money like this though. The brothers had a taste for the lavish lifestyle. They bought a plethora of wild animals and had them live with them. Tigers, pumas, reptiles, and various other unconventional pets lived at this mansion. Until one day, the brothers just disappeared. No one has any idea why they left or what happened to them, but they were just gone. With the mansion abandoned, some of the neighbors are said to have looted the space, and during their theft, they got carried away and murdered some of the animals. They didn't stop just there though, because it's even believed that they ate some of the animals after the fact. Now, what's left of this mansion is haunted by those same animals that were killed so many years ago. These animals aren't pleased with those that come here either. Workers who came to this mansion later have been said to have been attacked. In fact, some of them have been rushed to emergency rooms with bite and scratch marks from these ghostly beasts. People have reported seeing lizard-like things scurrying around the mansion and jungle cats standing at the top of the stairs looking menacing. I have never heard a story with a bunch of ghostly jungle animals before, but that's what we have here and from all the reports, these creatures aren't the friendliest. Number 5 on this list is the D'Souza Chawl. For those who aren't aware, because I wasn't until I looked it up, a chawl, according to Google, is a type of residential building found in western India similar to a tenement. Typically low quality housing chawls are generally associated with poverty. So that's a chawl, and the one in particular that we're looking at is one that's located in Mumbai. What's unique though is that it isn't the entire chawl that's haunted, it's actually just one specific spot in it. The well. Directly in the center of this building is a well. This well is lined on either side by houses of this trawl and is very enclosed. One day many years ago, a woman who lived in this building was going down to collect water from the well. As you can probably expect, it didn't go how she'd hoped and she fell inside. The fall was enough to end her life and her body was later discovered at the bottom of the well. Her body was later extracted from that well but her spirit never left. Ever since that tragic incident, the current residents of the trawl have seen her spirit wandering the halls throughout the night. Her wails and cries can be heard all around the chawl as well with the loudest instances happening by the well. She appears in white and even though her white gown is clean and beautiful, her face is battered, assumingly from the tumble that she took down the well. So far she hasn't claimed any other lives like some of the other ghostly entries on this list, but her incessant crying and mere existence is enough to make anyone lose their mind. Number 4 on this list is Dumas Beach. Dumas Beach is a very pretty black sand beach that's located in Gujarat on the Arabian Sea. This place is said to be stunning in the daytime and has even been described as a lookalike to God's home. When the sun goes down though, everything changes. Dumas Beach hasn't always been a fun daytime tourist attraction, it actually used to be an ancient burial ground. It's believed that for many centuries this beach was a very important Hindu cremation site. In fact, that's why people believe some of the sand is black. The ashes of those who were cremated got mixed in with the white sand and slowly over time changed the color to what it is today. It's believed that the spirits of those who were cremated here still haunt the beach when the moon comes out. Glowing orbs have been seen floating around the sand in the dark, seemingly without a source. Laughter and the sound of conversation can be heard even though it'll be the dead of night. There have even been some disappearances at this beach before. Some tourists going out at night for a stroll and never being heard from again. A really scary account says that a man was found dead on the beach with his tongue popping out of his mouth. It was positioned in such a way that the investigators couldn't come up with a logical reason as to how he died and ended up like that. It's currently unclear why the spirits like to come out at night and not in the daytime. Some believe it's because nighttime was when the rituals would take place, but others just think that this time of day is more susceptible to paranormal activity. Whatever the case may be, if you're visiting Dumas Beach, make sure that it's always in the bright light of the sun or else you could be in for some trouble. Number three on this list is Fengdu. Fengdu had to be included in this list because it's also literally called 
the Ghost City. It is a massive collection of shrines and temples that are dedicated to the afterlife located on the Ming Mountain. This place was built over 2000 years ago and is deeply rooted in Chinese culture. The reason that it's called the Ghost City isn't just because people believe it to be haunted today, but because of a legend that took place many years ago. Two imperial officers named Ying Chang Shen and Wang Fang Ping went to the mountain to practice Taoism. Whilst they were at this place, the pair performed a ritual to become immortal. When you combine their two names into Ying Wang, you get the translation King of Hell. This goes along with the stories that these two immortal beings will drag people down to the underworld. This site and these two immortals are so critical in Chinese culture because it's believed that every single spirit will pass through this place when they die. That's right guys, Fengdu is the location where a spirit will go immediately after their physical body ceases to function. There are three tests that the dead will go through before moving onto the next life. First, they must pass the bridge of helplessness. Then, they go through the ghost torturing pass. And then finally, they will wait at the front of Xianzi Palace. It's here that the ghost must stand on a stone for three whole minutes. If you are to be dragged down to the underworld, then it's at this time that it will take place. All of this ghostly activity has made this place very haunted. People have reported sinister laughs and strange noises coming from this place at all hours of the day. People have also reported hearing blood curdling screams coming from nowhere. They think that these screams are coming from the torturing of those ghosts. If all of this is true, then there really is no point of visiting this place. If all of this is true, then there really is no point in visiting because regardless of how you spin it, we're all gonna end up there one day anyways. Number two on this list is the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China is one of the seven wonders of the world and truly a sight to behold. The total length of the Great Wall of China is roughly 21,196 kilometers. This wall was built over thousands of years with the initial construction starting in the 7th century BC. Its purpose was largely to act as a defense mechanism between other nations and also to monitor what was coming in and out of their country. This wall is massive. More massive than anything we can really comprehend. In fact, to put it in perspective, I'm filming this in Toronto, Canada right now. Traveling to China from here is roughly 11,000 kilometers, meaning that the length of the Great Wall is long enough to go all the way to China and then come all the way back. Due to its massive size and means of construction, it's estimated that 1 to 2 million people died from just the construction of this wall alone. These 1 to 2 million people who died whilst making this wall are said to haunt it to this day. The ghosts of their souls still linger around various sections of the wall with many sightings happening throughout the years. People have seen these ghosts laboring away or just standing at the top of the wall looking down upon them. They've also heard the noises of somebody working or the moans of someone in pain with no person in sight. One to two million people is a lot of people to have died from this ambitious project. That amount of untimely death has to leave something behind, and I wouldn't be surprised if this great wall truly was haunted. It's one of the seven wonders of the world, so I won't tell you to never visit, but if you do, then just be wary. Number one on this list is the Xiao Ying Pun Community Complex. This community complex, which is located in Hong Kong, was listed as one of the most haunted places in China for quite some time. It started off, as many haunted buildings do, as an old mental institute. This institute was built in 1892 and operated as a mental hospital until World War II. During World War II, this building was used as a hospital for any people fighting, but then in 1947 went back to its initial purpose of housing those who were clinically insane. It continued to function like this until 1971 when it was eventually closed down and the building was abandoned. As with many mental hospitals from that era, there were a lot of human rights violations that took place. Couple that with some of the death that it saw in its walls, plus its abandonment, and the legend of a potential haunting started to run rampant. In the recent years, this place has been converted into a community center, but even this immense renovation hasn't stopped the ghostly sightings. The most famous apparition is that of a man dressed in traditional Chinese clothing. It's said that his presence isn't uncommon, and he will often engage people in conversations if they're by themselves. It should also be noted that the mental hospital before it closed closed down was ravaged by two separate fires. Some people died during these blazes, and the spirits of those burn victims have reportedly been spotted in the past. People have said that they've seen them standing at the end of the hall, staring at them, completely burned and bloodied. 
With a history like this location has, it's no wonder that spirits are still sighted walking among it to this day. Number five on this list is the Hotel of Doom. Yep guys, there's literally a hotel in North Korea that's been nicknamed the Hotel of Doom. It sounds like something straight out of an Austin Powers movie, but I can promise you that Dr. Evil is not residing there. That's because the hotel itself, the largest building in all of North Korea, has never had a single guest in it ever. It's completely abandoned and never fulfilled its initial initial purpose of being the most prestigious hotel in North Korea. In fact, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, the 1,080 foot tall building is the tallest unoccupied building on the entire planet. 105 stories of just absolute nothingness. North Korea never finished the building because they just simply ran out of money. The whole country is estimated to have a gross domestic product of about 40 billion dollars and the building is estimated to take roughly 2 billion to finish. So to finish this hotel, Hotel, the country would need to allot 5% of all its money to get it done. Needless to say, it won't be happening anytime soon. Even though this Hotel of Doom isn't housing any human visitors, that doesn't mean that someone isn't putting it to good use though. Well, maybe someone is a poor choice of words. It might be better to say something. Since the exterior construction of it finished in 2008, there have been rumors circulating about some sort of creature living in this hotel. Not a physical being like a werewolf or or a beast of some kind, but a shadow figure that floats throughout. A little bit like a Dementor from Harry Potter, but even less humanoid than those were. The sightings have been few and far between because no one ever goes into the hotel, it's only ever been spotted from the ground looking up. People have reported a sense of uneasiness when walking past this building, but the building itself is also very intimidating. North Korea doesn't have many buildings of this stature, so this one definitely sticks out like a sore thumb. If a shadow creature has taken up residence here, then it's honestly done pretty well for itself. In fact, it may own one of the most expensive, albeit unfinished, properties in all of North Korea. Number four on this list is the prisons. And yes, you did hear that properly guys, prisons as in plural, not just one, but all of them. North Korea is very secretive about everything that goes on there, so making a list about this country is pretty tough. Because of that, it's hard to identify one specific prison that's haunted, but based on the stories of these places, I'd honestly assume that all of them are. The amount of death that happens at North Korean prisons is actually messed up. In fact, a judge who survived Auschwitz said that these prisons are just as bad. The first section on Wikipedia in regards to these prisons writes, North Korean prison camps have conditions that are unsanitary, life-threatening, and are comparable to historical concentration camps. A significant number of prisoners have died each year since they are subject to torture and inhumane treatment. Public and secret executions of prisoners, even children, especially in cases of attempted escape are commonplace. The mortality rate is exceptionally high because many prisoners die of starvation, illness, work accidents, or torture. There have also been reports that even if your father committed a crime for instance, well, you'll also go to jail for it. Innocent people are being sent into these places with no due process and dying in these horrible and harsh environments all the time. Just how some of those German camps are haunted by those who were taken far too soon? I have to imagine that the same thing's going on here. Now we don't know for sure and there aren't any specific stories that have come to the light, but that's mostly because North Korea keeps all their info airtight, and there have only been a few stories that have even come out about survivors of this place. I feel like it goes without saying, but obviously, this is a spot that you should just never go. Number three on this list is Jatinga. At this point, I've read and heard hundreds, maybe even thousands of scary stories, but I've never heard of one quite as unique as what's going on in the village of Jatinga. Jatinga is a small village with less than 3,000 total people living there. Even though it doesn't have a large population of humans, it does have a large population of birds that live around the area, and that particular haunting that we'll be looking at actually concerns them. There's a phenomenon that occurs here that's been named by the locals and those studying it as the bird suicides. That's right guys, at this one particular village, birds will actually take their own life. Apparently they fly in one direction together towards the sun and then all simultaneously plummet to the ground and die upon impact. Oftentimes this takes place on several occasions during September and October of each year. Some experts believe that this is just a coincidence and several birds have got disoriented, crashed into something and then died, but locals think that there's a curse. Where it originated from they're unsure of, but they believe that the village is haunted and evil spirits have caused these birds to take their own life as a means of terrorizing the villagers. I for one honestly can't imagine how unsettling it would be to have several birds falling from the sky regularly taking their own lives. 
Also, if we just step back for a second and acknowledge how actually crazy this whole phenomenon even is in the first place, a bunch of birds in this small village of 3,000 people will fall to the ground and die every year at the same time. If that isn't something out of a horror novel, then I don't know what is. Number two on this list are the forts of Bengar. This fort in India is one of the most haunted spots in the country and has incredible amounts of lore surrounding it. A tourist tells the legend of the fort where she writes, The guide told us of the beautiful princess Ratnavati, who was the daughter of Shatter Singh. She was the jewel of Rajasthan. Ratnavati was much younger than her stepbrother Ajab Singh and was as universally liked as he was disliked. Tales of her beauty and delightful temperament spread far and wide and she received many marriage proposals. A tantric priest, who was well versed in black magic, fell in love with her. But knowing that he didn't stand a chance with the beautiful princess, he tried to cast a spell on her. Seeing the princess's maid buying perfume for her in the village, he cast a spell on it so that Ratnavati would fall in love with him. Ratnavati came to know of this and threw the bottle. It turned into a boulder and hit the tantric. He was crushed under its weight, but before he died, he cursed the princess, her family, and the entire village. The next year, a battle was fought between the forces of Bangar and Ajabgar, which led to the death of Ratnavati and most of the army. This is the ancient legend that surrounds this fort, but many modern ghost stories have been told as well. Many of the locals believe that this place is the home to some devilish characters. This is due to all of the people that have gone missing at this location. It's believed that some ghostly presence is snatching people away. The purpose of these abductions are unknown though. It's also believed that due to that ancient legend, no one can build a roof here. That any new structure will break and burn to the ground from the spirits that own this place. Some apparitions have also been seen, with many people reporting that it was a lady that they saw. It's currently unclear if that's the ghost of Ratnavati or someone else who's been been wronged at this location. The scariest part about this place is that you could literally never leave. To get abducted or to go missing is pretty freaking serious and if there's some sort of entity that's doing this to people here or cursing them in some way, I'd avoid it at all costs. Number one on this list is Dow Hill. Dow Hill is a hill station, which if you didn't know, is a small town that's located at a higher elevation than the nearby plain. Most places that you look up on the internet, they'll have a Wikipedia page, some other articles, a trip advisor, and then maybe get into the haunted stuff. Look up Dow Hill, it's all about this place being haunted. Killings, disappearances, satanic rituals, all of these have happened in Dow Hill and they've undoubtedly left their mark on this tiny little town. Several different ghosts and hauntings currently riddle this place. One of the most popular is that of the Headless Boy. There's a road that's been nicknamed the Death Road that goes from Dow Hill to the forest's office. This Death Road is the home to the Headless who marches along the side of it and will often appear to unsuspecting visitors. This death road heads straight to the forest's office, but things just get worse when you get there. Apparently, glowing red eyes have been spotted coming out of the forest, the sort of eyes that don't belong to any typical animal. There have also been sightings of a woman, not in white, but actually in gray rags that wanders around the forest looking lost and destitute. This is already enough to make me not want to go, but they also have a haunted boys school at Dow Hill. Whisperings, footsteps, doors slamming from thin air, screams, cries, laughter. This can all be heard from the apparent nothing inside of this boy's school. All of this makes Dow Hill one of the most haunted spots in India and definitely a place that you need to keep off of your travel list. Coming in at number five, we have Ozone Disco. What a name, I kind of want to go. In March of 1996, a tragic accident happened in Qzone City's Ozone Disco. The local universities had just done their yearly graduation ceremonies. The students were looking to celebrate and there was a party being thrown for them at the disco. There were around 350 guests attending that night, even though the building had only been cleared to safely hold 35 people. Due to the large amount of people in such a small place, when the fire broke out, they did not stand much chance of escape. Tragically, around 200 people did not make it out that night. Not only did the fire consume the lives of many, but others were trampled in the chaos of trying to escape. The one fire exit the building had been blocked by the building next door, meaning the large amount of people who fled to it to escape became trapped. It was reported that when entering the building to look for survivors, the bodies were piled up waist high. Survivors of the fire explained how around midnight sparks started flying from the DJ booths shortly after smoke appeared. Party goers thought 
thought it was part of the experience, that it was all pyrotechnics to mark the new day. This meant that many did not flee as soon as they should have. All of this combined into a huge tragedy that claimed the lives of so many who were just about to start their lives. Since the incident, the club has been closed and abandoned. However, those who are around the club at night have witnessed some paranormal activity. Some have heard music coming from the club's doors or seen disco lights from a distance. You might think these are just kids who have snuck into party, but others have heard disturbing screams for help, but as they got closer to investigate, the screams fade away. There is a clear warning to those who might try to visit the place today that it's not safe. You might meet a paranormal spirit angry from the tragedy, or you might have a dangerous accident of your own. Coming in at number 4 we have Malacanang Palace. Malacanang Palace is the White House of the Philippines. It is the official residence and principal workplace for the President of the Philippines. It was originally built in 1750, so it has a long history, making it perfect for some paranormal happenings. The building has been home to many important people, but has also been a part of revolutions within the country, leading to many tragic passings on the property. In particular, there is one story that during one of the revolts by the people, they stormed and seized the home. They found one presidential worker who is now unknown and made their own justice. Although this is not a confirmed story, it is often told to explain one of the paranormal guests who has been pictured outside of the home. They have been named the Headless ghost. The photo captured shows the outside of the palace with a headless figure facing the camera. It is thought that this poor soul was separated with his head before passing and now walks the halls searching for it. He is not the only ghost that has been spotted on the premises though. There have been sightings of former presidents, such as Manuel Cuzon and Manuel Roxas. There is also a report where Governor Emi Marcos, daughter of Ferdinand Marcos, actually saw Cuzon's ghost at one point during her father's presidency. I guess when you dedicate your life to serving as president, it is hard to let go of the place you call home. If you were to visit, maybe keep your camera handy. You never know who you might just see. Number 3 on this list is Kim Jong Il's tomb. Kim Jong Il was the leader of North Korea for almost 20 years before passing in 2011. The Kim Susan Memorial Palace is a massive palace that used to house the initial ruler of North Korea, Kim Jong Il's father, Kim Il Sung. Once he died though, this massive place was converted into a mausoleum to respect the great leader and then later his son as well. This place is creepy as is all holy hell though and is definitely haunted by these old leaders. Let's just take a quick look at what they currently have Kim Jong Il chilling in. It's this massive all glass container that he's been mummified in. His embalmed body just lies there all the time and it's actually a tourist attraction now. North Korea has opened this up to the public if you want to go and pay your respects to their great leader. If you do go, which I don't recommend doing because it's super creepy and kind of weird, but if you do, then ABC News writes, all visitors are are required to pass through jets of air to cleanse them of dust. Tourists are required to bow at the feet and arms of the dead father and son. However, they are not permitted to bow at the head as it's considered disrespectful. Cameras and phones are not allowed. Apparently, the ghosts of these two former North Korean leaders haunt this place and people have seen their spirits wandering around the building. Kim Jong Il and his dad weren't the greatest of guys when they were alive, so I can only imagine that going to visit them in spirit form probably isn't going to be too much better. Number 2 on this list is the 38th parallel. The 38th parallel, according to Google, is a circle of latitude that is 38 degrees north of Earth's equatorial plane. It crosses Europe, the Mediterranean Sea, Asia, the Pacific Ocean, North America, and the Atlantic Ocean. The 38th parallel north formed the border between North and South Korea prior to the Korean War. This 38th parallel is actually a demilitarized zone between North and South Korea now. This area is really difficult to get across, though, for your average Joe. It's riddled with landmines, and on either side of the borders, there's a sizable military presence just waiting to strike if you do attempt to do anything. Regardless of how dangerous it is to cross, though, many North Koreans have attempted to get through this zone and into South Korea to try and escape their current life that they have in their own country. Over the years since this zone has been there, many North Korean citizens have risked their lives trying to get across this place. There have even been stories of people getting in vehicles and just gunning it as fast as they can, hoping to get to the other side. If they do manage to make it the whole way, then South Korea is typically sympathetic to their cause and will invite them into their own country as a Korean citizen. Many of them don't make it though. They're usually gunned down and stopped before they can make it far at all from their own country. Because of this, it's believed this area is haunted by the ghosts of those who tried to make it across and couldn't. These people were so close to salvation but just couldn't quite make it the last little bit and now their souls forever remain here wishing they could have just pushed a little bit further. Not many people have seen them because this is a super hard 
area of the world to get to, but those who have have said that they look to be in sheer agony, that they cry out and reach for those that they seize in an attempt to get these people to save them. For more reason than one, I don't recommend going to the 38th parallel. Number one on this list is Sinchon. The North Korean town of Sinchon is located in the South Huangwei province of North Korea. This town was apparently the site of what is referred to as the Sinchon Massacre. Now the reason that I use the word apparently there is because this massacre is kind of all up in the air. The North Korean government claims that from the 17th of October to the 7th of December, the United States military killed just over 30,000 North Korean citizens. This next part was actually released by the North Korean Central News Agency in 1998, and fair warning, it's pretty graphic in its detail. They say the American soldiers drowned over 2,000 innocent people by dropping them from Sok Tan Bridge. They also drowned more than 1,000 women in Sowon Reservoir. Upwards of 1,200 patriotic-minded people detained in an ice warehouse House were bitten to death by military dogs. The headmaster of Young Hae Won of Jungsun Primary School was sawed up alive. They even talk about how the American soldiers performed horrible atrocities on children, but I actually can't even say how they described it on YouTube, or else this video would definitely get taken down. Now, even though this is what the North Koreans have come out and said, the South Koreans heavily dispute this. They say that it was the Korean right wing extremists and communists who performed these killings. Regardless of who was actually responsible, though, or the true death toll figures, something horrible did take place in this town. The atrocity here left its mark, and it's believed that those who were killed haunt this place to this day. The innocent souls still wander around this town and can't find peace. Glowing orbs and ghostly apparitions are regularly spotted here. It isn't just one ghost or one type of ghost either, but a horrifying variety. Men, women, children, ghost-like figures have been spotted of all of them before. Definitely not a cute and quaint town that you would want to visit if you ever did find yourself here. Kicking off at number 5, Building 2283, Okinawa. Throughout modern history and following the events of World War II, Japan has seen a large military occupation, the majority of which come from the US. Because of that, these collisions of culture have been met with some pretty spooky outcomes. One of those is Building 2283 at the Kadena Air Base, which is actually a single unit family home in a residential area, which was historically reserved for mid-grade officers and high-ranking civilians. Well, of course, no one lives there anymore, and the Kadena Air Base goes out of their way to make sure the building is eerily maintained. Whatever happened before the US moved in is unclear, but tales of a grisly murder are the main consensus. A number of families occupied the residence, but all of them soon reported the same stories. Water faucets and lights turning on and off by themselves, the sound of children laughing and crying just out of earshot, and the sight of a woman washing her hair constantly in the utility sink. Allegedly, the origin of the haunting comes from a family who occupied the house sometime in the late 70s, a teenage girl who was obsessed with keeping herself clean, and an abusive stepfather that stabbed her to death and then killed himself. Next up at number 4, Gridley Tunnel. Yokosuka. Again, another ghostly tale that comes from the military. The Gridley Tunnel on the Yokosuka Naval Base is a narrow, one-way tunnel that runs directly underneath a hill from Gridley Lane to Nimitz Boulevard, an access route running away from Yokosuka that was repurposed from an ancient fortification that existed before the modern naval base was built in the 1870s. Allegedly, the staggering amount of the exact same sighting is what has given this ghost its legend. As people drive through the one-way tunnel, they glance in the the rearview mirror and see a bloody samurai chasing them. Some people have been so startled by the sighting that they've totaled their vehicle into the side of the tunnel, and the ghostly samurai often emerges on rainy nights between midnight and 1am. As the legend goes, the apparition is the ghost of a long dead samurai, who was on his way to avenge the death of his feudal lord when he was ambushed by the same assassins and brutally killed. Allegedly, because he failed his mission of vengeance, he cannot leave the tunnel and is left to wander. Eternally. Coming in at number 3 we have Clark Air Base Hospital. Clark Air Base Hospital was used during World War II and the Vietnam War. It now lays abandoned on a redeveloped Air Force base. It is said that as soon as you enter the destroyed building you instantly feel the paranormal energy that belongs there. The locals believe it to be cursed and dare not enter. Due to this, it is seen as the most haunted hospital in the country. The hospital has been ravaged by time, most parts overgrown with greenery, with others simply falling apart. The hospital today does still attract ghost hunters. Due to the amount of pain and suffering that occurred during its time, there are plenty of lost spirits trapped. 
A number of visitors have reported hearing voices echo through the empty halls of the hospital. Some hear screams. It is said that the voices of those trapped are of the soldiers who lost their lives in the war. It seems they feel they have unfinished business in the world. Many would have left behind their families to serve their country. These are not the only patients still staying there though. The first floor ward was home to the hospital's pediatric centre. People have heard the screams of newborn babies and children laughing. One security guard even heard the running footsteps of what sounded like a child. This entity ran straight past him one night while on patrol. He has since refused to patrol within the hospital walls. The hotel did still operate after the war, until a nearby volcano erupted covering the hospital in ash. This was taken as a sign by the locals that nature was warning them to stay away. There are also those who ignore the warnings and venture inside. Just be warned it seems to have a habit of causing tragedy. Coming in at number 2 we have Laparole House. The Laparole House was built by Roberto Laparole in the 1930s. During World War II the house was used by Japanese soldiers. They were reportedly a nasty group of brutes. They attacked local women, tortured suspected ties and even ended their life once they received any information that they had. The house is said to have seen many horrors due to all of this and the home was never the same after the soldiers left. Those who had been there within this time warned others to stay away. The house transferred and ownership after the death of the head of the Laparole clan. They attempted to maintain the home, but the years and horrors do show on the home's old exterior. The house has withstood much more than those around it, both man made and natural disasters. To everyone's surprise, the house was still standing after the deadly earthquake of 1990. In 2013, the home was turned into a museum. It was at this point that we started to hear more details about the hauntings inside. The show has been visited on many ghost haunting shows, along with being featured in a film. Those who have visited the house have told of what they found and why the house is visited to often by paranormal investigators. One visitor claimed that they heard screams coming from the lower sections of the home. They rushed to go see if someone was hurt, but they found nothing. As they read more about the home, they believe this could have been linked to where the torture happened during the war. Others felt a dark presence in various sections of the home. Cold spots or a feeling of sadness that disappeared as quickly as they had felt it. Some said they felt watched like there was an entity in the home that no one can see, but it is watching all who visit closely. One man claimed he heard water running in the rooms, but when he went to turn it off, there was nothing there. Not even a source for any water to be coming from. The home is haunted by the ghosts of the past, but might also hold an ancient entity that causes you to feel watched. Either way, this is not a home I'll be visiting anytime soon. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Manheat Cave. Manheat Cave got its name from the smell of the accumulated bat droppings inside the cave. Located in the central Philippines, this is a scary location due to more than the hauntings. Many people are scared of entering dark and possibly unstable caves, but this one contains more than just the fear of confined spaces. The cave is popular by those who like to explore deep into caves in their spare time. To do it at your own risk, the cave is said to be haunted by lost caving groups. The cave does not offer much light, and the deep you go, the more lost you get. There have been a number of groups that have gone lost throughout the years with no remains ever recovered. There are so many hidden corners within its maze you will never be found. Those who explore it today have encountered a number of paranormal occurrences. Some report seeing shadows not cast by them or their group like there is someone else with them. Others have heard footsteps scrambling around as if in panic. Finally, the further in you travel, the more you hear a distant scream of help. Often only one of two members of your team will hear this. No matter how far towards the voice you go, it will keep seeming out of reach. This causes people to go further and further into the caving system until their team bring them to their senses to head back. Those who have experienced this believe it may be how the others have gone missing. Some say there may be a demon living deep within the cave looking to bring the lost souls to feast on. Number 5. Fengdu Ghost City Fengdu Ghost City. Well, right off the bat, I feel like this is probably a spooky place. You don't name cities Ghost City unless there's a good reason for it. Well, the good reason is that the city got its name during the Eastern Han Dynasty. Two imperial nobles, Yin Changshen and Wang Fengpin, came to Ming Mountain to discover a way to achieve immortality. Combining their two names, Yin and Wang, Ying Wang, translates to King of Hell, and that cemented the site as an underworld hotspot. Since then, the place was built to be a shrine to the underworld world with several temples showing paintings and sculptures of people being punished for their sins and cast into eternal damnation. It's pretty spooky, but honestly it's pretty cool. It's good craftsmanship. And there is some rich folklore to go with the place. Chinese mythology and beliefs say that the dead must pass three tests before they're allowed to cross into the underworld, which sounds exhausting to me. I can't even enjoy the relief of death before you're asked to solve some riddles and pass some tests. The village is kind of like a place to conduct these tests, and now you can actually go to it yourself and do it as a tourist 
contraction and watch performers act out all the trials. But here's the trials. The first test is passing the Bridge of Helplessness, which does sound a little bit like it's from one of the Dark Souls games. It was built during the Ming Dynasty, and good souls are allowed to pass, while evil ones will fall into the water below. Then, you proceed to Ghost Torturing Pass, well that's a fun place to be, where they present themselves for judgement. Finally, the last test is at the entrance to Tianzi Palace, where the ghost must stand on a certain stone on one foot for three minutes straight. I don't know why I'm standing on one foot when the camera is above my waist. You can't tell what I'm doing. I could be standing on as many feet as I want. A good soul will be able to do it, an evil one will fall over. Now this site now is a popular tourist destination due to its very unique structures and fascinating, if not a little bit horrifying decor. I'd I'd want one of those little statues maybe have in my house. I think they're kind of cool, to be honest. And if you're looking for more hellish haunted spots, terrifying tales of poltergeists, ghosts, ghouls, cryptids, aliens, and all kinds of freaks under the sun and above it, Wild Top 5 Scary is simply the only place to be. Subscribe and stay scared. Number 4, Kaishiku Grounds. If you go to Kaishiku today, you probably wouldn't think much of it at all. The uh, most notable thing around there is a subway station, and aside from that, there's a vegetable market outside, and you can probably score a pretty decent deal on corn. But if you visited Kaishiku back in the 19th century, however, when it served as an execution grounds for prisoners, you probably wouldn't feel too welcome. Thousands of prisoners were brought to the Kaishiku grounds to serve out their last moments. Every autumn, prisoners were taken through the Zuan Women, which earned the fun nickname, the Gate of death at dawn. Awesome. The doomed would then be lined up east to west, their necks stretched by rope to make it easier to chop. Well, that's good. We always want to make it as easy as possible for the guy chopping necks. A singular chop to the neck was considered the easy way out of a one-way trip to Kaishiku. Prisoners accused of more serious crimes would be sentenced to Lingchi, which was a horrid punishment of slowly slicing someone many, many, many many times, leading to it sensationally being dubbed the death of a thousand cuts by outsiders. These executions were designed to be a public spectacle, something for everybody to come and enjoy, something for the whole family to do when no good movies were playing. Kaishiku was one of the busiest intersections in the outer city of Beijing, so crowds would gather to see these things. Most horrifically about this though, is that sometimes the prisoners who were executed, their bodies were photographed and made into postcards. Given this sordid history, is it much of a surprise at all? that passers-by and visitors claim that they can sometimes see ghostly apparitions making their way through the dark hours of the night, or that you can hear screams at all hours? If you ever visit Beijing and make a stop by Kaishiku, take a photo. The, uh, the postcards they sell in the gift shop are a little, uh, dicey. Coming in at number three, the Hanging Ruins, Osaka. In the Shinsekai district of Osaka, there lies the remains of a burned out four story building that has eerily been dubbed by locals as the Hanging Ruins. As the legend goes, in the early 2000s, the apartment building burned out in a tragic fire, where it remained for years untouched and unrepaired. In 2005, an employee of a local spa located from across the ruins spotted a strange long object dangling from its roof. Well, the employee decided to call the authorities, who invested investigated and realised that the strange object was in fact a corpse. The next day, there was a mysterious pair of shoes dangling from where the body was found. A few years later, another local was passing by and they spotted what appeared to be a life-sized doll hanging from the same rooftop. Eerily enough, it turned out to be yet another corpse, and yet again another mysterious pair of shoes were found dangling the next day. Eventually, curious folks started throwing pairs of shoes from the building in tribute to the mysterious corpses found there. As far as the residents of Osaka are concerned, there had been at least three bodies found in the hanging ruins, yet who they were, or what they were, remains a mystery. Swinging in at number 2, the Doriodo Ruins, Tokyo. Doriodo, also referred to as the Haunted Temple of Hashioji and translates roughly to the End of the Road Temple, is known as one of the most haunted locations in Japan and has been host to some grisly and ghostly tales throughout its history, ever since it was first constructed in 1590. As one of its many legends goes, in 1963, an 82-year-old woman who was in charge of maintaining the site was approached by a robber. The woman tried to fight back against against the criminal and was tragically killed as a result. Days later, locals reported the ghostly sounds of a woman sobbing in the forest, a spirit that was tragically bound to the ruins. Exactly 10 years later, in 1973, a female university student was caught up in an affair with her English literature professor who was married and had two small children. When word of the affair got out, things ended tragically, and the professor ultimately killed the young girl, burying her body in a shallow grave at the site of the Doriado ruins. 
It didn't end there though. The act of murder drove the professor to madness and weeks later the corpse of him, his wife and his two children were found washed up by some nearby cliffs. To this day locals have reported hearing a young woman whispering, I'm here, I'm here, alongside the sound of an old woman sobbing. And finally at our number one spot, Ekogahara Forest, Yamananshi. Of course, it has to be perhaps the most notorious and infamous location in the whole of Japan. Ekogahara Forest, also known as the Sea of Trees, is a beautiful location that historically has harboured a very dark and eerie past. Since the 1800s, the forest which sits in the shadow of Mount Fuji has had a reputation with being a gateway for the Yurei, the ghosts of the dead in Japanese mythology, and has been revered as a location and site for communicating with spirits. It was also connected to the ancient practice of Ubusute, a mythical Japanese practice where an elderly person was taken to a forest to die. It wasn't until 1961 that the forest began its grisly reputation with suicide, when a famous Japanese writer, Seiko Matsumoto, penned the novel Nami no To, Tower of Waves, where the lead characters tragically committed suicide in the confines of the forest. In 2010, more than 200 people attempted to take their own lives in the forest, and tragically, that figure continued to rise as Japan struggles to confront its staggering suicide rate and battle with mental illness. Ekogahara Forest continues to be a human reminder of these lives lost and the tormented spirits that still linger there. Number five, the Sulu Archipelago and Sea. The Sulu Archipelago, located in the southwestern regions of the Philippines, is known for its stunning natural beauty, but it is also known for the complex challenges that have risen. The region consists of many small islands, including Sulu, Tawi Tawi, and Basilan, and is surrounded by the Sulu Sea. The current state of the Sulu Archipelago and its surrounding seas involves a mixture of socio-economic, security, and political concerns. The Sulu Archipelago has has been labeled as a level 4 safety risk by the United States Bureau of Consular Affairs, and it is strongly recommended that you do not travel or visit the area. The Sulu Archipelago is currently facing high rates of crime, civil unrest, rebel forces, and abductions. Armed groups are currently and consistently plotting abductions, bombings, and other attacks, with no discretion or care for citizen casualties. They attack with little to no warning, and specifically target tourist locations like markets, malls, or government facilities. Rebels are abducting people on land and sea for ransom, bombings, and other attacks that target U.S. citizens, foreigners, civilians, and local government institutions, security forces, and authorities. The U.S. government has a limited ability to help or provide services to civilians, because U.S. government employees have to obtain a special authorization to travel to the affected areas. The Philippine government declared that they are in a state of national emergency. There are a lot of pickpockets, scammers, internet scams, and credit card scams. People are warned to turn down offers of food, drinks, or rides from strangers. Travelers traveling alone have been abducted after they, after they were slipped a strong sedative. Because of the current climate, the Sulu Archipelago is not a safe place to visit, and it is definitely not a safe place to live. I think that too often, people think that wars and organized criminal attacks are a thing of the past, or that they're exaggerated. They're not. If anything, the attacks that are shared are often sugar-coated. This is all happening now. People right now, people your age, people my age are being killed, tormented, abducted, essayed, and are living in constant rational fear. A lot more attention definitely needs to be brought to the situation, and the fact that any coverage surrounding the Philippines is so unbelievably minimal and inaccessible is so saddening, and I'm sure frustrating for anyone who has loved ones in the Philippines or lives in the Philippines themselves. Number 4. De La Salle University De La Salle University is a private Catholic research and educational university. It was established by the Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools in 1911 as De La Salle College, which changed to De La Salle University in 1975 when it was granted university status. When it was founded, the De La Salle brothers were nervously reluctant to open the school because Americans insisted that the first school made should only be available to the ruling Filipino elite. However, a school for the upper class children of ruling elite families who need good moral and spiritual training was opened. By 1921, the school had 425 students. The school offered amazing programs and was widely appreciated for the educational staff and grand accommodations. But 
During the Second World War, De La Salle was used as a secret shelter for displaced citizens, wounded soldiers, families, and freedom fighters at the beginning of the Japanese occupation. But on January 2nd, 1942, it was occupied by the Imperial Japanese Army and made into military defense quarters. Several and attacks occurred on campus, but classes did continue until they were discontinued and forced to vacate the campus at the demand of Japanese forces. Most people left the campus, but Egbert Xavier Kelly refused to leave. So on February 7th, 1945, he was abducted by Japanese soldiers, harmed severely, and then killed. On February 12th, just after noon, 20 Japanese soldiers forcibly entered the campus and massacred 16 boys who resided in the chapel of the campus and an additional 25 other residents. There were only 22 survivors. It's now said that the ghosts of the students, teachers, and families are searching for safety. They're still trapped in the same place they died. It has since become a dark tourism location, which a lot of people find to be extremely strange. Tourism that focuses on places with dark or tragic histories, like cemeteries, war sites, churches, or sites that people passed at. Since the site is an active school, tourists are not very welcome to visit the location. Many people do try to sneak in, but it's highly discouraged, and any overly curious onlookers may be arrested, charged with trespassing, or have legal action taken, taken out against them. Number three, the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City, well that tracks. That sounds very forbidden. Well, back in the 14th century, when it stood as the heart of the Ming Dynasty and served as an imperial palace, yeah, you'd have a pretty difficult time getting access if you were but a common serf like myself. But I think they've relaxed their stance just a little bit because I found more than a few Google recommended articles for tourist things to do in the Forbidden City. I think they just charge like price of admission now. So it's actually very easy to get into the Forbidden City and the Chinese government does know about this. So the formerly Forbidden City, which is not quite as catchy a name, is a beautiful tourist spot and definitely worth checking out. It's got years upon years of culture and rich history behind it and most importantly it's said to be very haunted. The Forbidden City is a pretty credible place for a haunting if I must say. Ghosts are said to be born out of a place of malice and the Forbidden City has over 600 years of deaths, assassinations, and who knows how many backstabs and plot twists were the intriguer out there. The most recurring ghost story coming out of the Forbidden City though is that there's a ghost of a weeping woman all dressed in white wandering during the dark hours. Following her is a lingering flute playing. Visitors claim at times they see ghost dogs that run through corridors at the edge of the city, digging up ghost bones. Some travelers report feeling an indescribable strangeness while wandering through the temples. Could it just be they're overcome with beauty and majesty of one of the wonders of the world, or is there spectral energy floating through the air? Before we move off on this one, I want you to take a look at this. A travel blog from Vancouver posted about their experiences traveling through the Imperial City. They noted how odd it was that all the doorways had a raised platform. The guide told them that was a way to confuse ghosts to keep them out. They took tons of photos, but only one stood out for them when they came back. See anything suspicious? Like a ghostly figure just kind of hanging right there in the center? Ugh. Number two, Dead Fengmen Village. Coming up next on this list is going to be Fengmen Village. Fengmen Village is sometimes known as Dead Fengmen's Village, which is not exactly the most welcoming name you want to hear, but there's a pretty good reason for it though. The village itself is about as dead as a village can be, long abandoned by an unknown tribe. It's located in the valley of a nameless mountain in northern China's Henan province. An abandoned city left in a nameless mountain. It seems like it's the start of a chosen one, like heroic journey out there, start of a quest. The surrounding landscape is supposedly quite beautiful. A flowing brook, a, a lush forestry and trees and buildings from the Qing dynasty. 39 buildings, 200 rooms, all of them left completely vacant. And the weird part? No one even knows why. There is extremely little information to be found on Fengmen Village. Who lived there, what happened to them, and so on, so on. Making it absolutely rife for urban legends of hauntings and ghosts. It's a fairly popular spot for backpackers and hikers with an interest in the supernatural who are looking to discover something in the lost village. One story tells of a hiker named Maitreya who would make expeditions out to Fengmen Village camping alongside the river just outside with a few companions. On one of his treks, he got the bright idea in the middle of the night to prank his companions by jumping and scaring them, which let me just say, I absolutely have to respect that. You're camping out in an abandoned ghost village, you have to seize the opportunity to prank your friends just a little bit. Well before he got a chance, he got served up his own scare, because he swears a discordant, sad sounding voice kept calling his name out over and over, in a voice he said he couldn't recognize or had never heard before. 
and none of his friends had any idea what he was talking about. At number one, Chow Nai 81. Our next entry is Chow Nai number 81, a building that has a fairly notable reputation, being listed as the most haunted building in Beijing. It's Beijing's most famous haunted house. The ghost most commonly reported in this house is that of a woman who is the wife of an officer in the National Revolutionary Army during the Chinese Civil War in the late 1940s. He had fled to Taiwan with his compatriots before the end of the war and left his precious wife behind. Naturally, she was pretty upset about this. She was despondent. She she felt that without her husband she had nothing left to live for and thusly took her own life. And her spirit has been trapped in the house ever since. Residents who live around the area claim that during thunderstorms you can hear shrill, violent screaming coming from inside the house. Visitors report that walking into the house immediately, like immediately, you feel a cold chill come over you and a feeling of inescapable dread. Not good. Not good to feel those things. There's stories of people going inexplicably missing connected to this mysterious house. One notable story is that of a British priest who was said to have initially built the property to serve as a church who went missing shortly before it was finished. When an investigation was launched to look for him, they supposedly discovered a secret tunnel that led to a neighborhood in the northeast and the priest's body was never discovered. Now another story was that three construction workers in the basement of a neighboring building weren't paying attention to what they were doing and broke through a thin wall leading into building 81. They went through the hole and the three of them vanished. And now there are people who conspire that this event is what led the government to cancel its plans to demolish the building for fear that it might be haunted. And it hasn't been yet because it's still standing there and you're more than welcome to visit. You can take a guided ghost tour if you're feeling brave enough and hopefully you come back. Number five, Bangar Fort. Now if you google Bangar Fort, if you're planning a trip up there anytime soon, almost every result will give you back something like India's most notorious or India's most haunted. So maybe that should give you a bit of a sense as to what's going on here. It's uh, bad news. In fact, the place is said to be so filled to bursting with malevolent spirits that the Indian government actually restricts tourists from visiting after sunset for fear of spiritual danger. Let's take a look at the history of the Bangar Fort, one of the most notorious haunted places in India if the search engine is anything to go by. The fort was first built in the 17th century and according to local legends, a religious ascetic lived nearby to the fort and insisted that any house built near the fort shouldn't be taller than its own house. Not sure why, but he just didn't want to be upstaged, I guess. If the shadow of any house fell on his own, he would destroy the fort, he threatened. When columns were added to the fort that casted a shadow, the fort was destroyed and abandoned seemingly overnight. Now a variant of this legend suggests that a priest who practiced black magic and was a practitioner of the occult was in love with a la princess who lived in the fort. He offered her a love elixir and when she refused his proposal, he cursed the entire village condemning it to be damned by the spirits for eternity. Locals claim that walking by the Bangar fort you can hear women screaming and crying from within at night and strange otherworldly music can be heard playing seemingly from nowhere. Other residents claim that they see shadowy wisps or ethereal lights coming out of the fort's structure alongside strange smells? What does a ghost smell like? I wonder. You know what? Don't let me know. That's maybe one that's better left not knowing. The reason for the ban after sunset is because local legends say that any person who enters the fort during the night will never be seen again and will become one of the spirits trapped inside. So maybe just stay within the guidelines and follow the signs just this once. And if you're looking for more videos about haunted hot spots, alien sightings, cryptids, creepy crawlies, and basically just about anything scary under the sun and above it, well, Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some. So click on through, subscribe, stay scared, and don't miss a single scream. But do that after you finish watching this video, okay? We worked hardish on it. Number 4, Tunnel 33. Shimla is said to be one of the most beautiful cities in the entire country of India and happens to also be home to some of the more haunted hot spots. Now this one in particular might not be as scary as some of the other ones in this list. I thought maybe I'd give you a little break before we really got into it. But this ghost has been described as a lot friendlier than your average spirit. More of a Casper, if you will. Tunnel 33 is the longest tunnel in the Kalka Shimla railway track built in the late 18th century in 1898. British railway engineer Colonel Balrog was the man in charge of constructing 
something, the project, Colonel Balrog, I'm pretty sure he was a Street Fighter character. Colonel Balrog was given a thin deadline and he failed to meet expectations for the tunnel, leading to him being humiliated in his career after the British government was understandably pretty upset with him. Distraught, completely despondent, he ended up taking his own life and was buried near the incomplete tunnel on the railroad tracks where his spirit has remained ever since. Residents report seeing apparitions of the good colonel through the tunnel, sometimes saying they see him standing, admiring his work, riding his horse, or if you really believe some of the more out there stories, he's even been seen talking to tourists and locals as they pass through, asking questions about his tunnel and if the project is going well and if they're meeting deadlines. The poor guy is still so focused on his work all these years later. Take a break, man, for us, please. A phantasmal 15. You've earned it. There's something very sad about a ghost who's stuck on the land he worked on, unable to move on. He's not interested in haunting or scaring anyone, but just doomed to check in on a project he never got to see completed. If you ever visit the Accursed Tunnel, and if you happen to see the Colonel, tell him thank you. Won't you? For, for me, okay? Tell him that the tunnel looks great and he did a good job. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Number three, Laparal House and Vahe Nupula. These two houses share a similar dark and horrific history. The Laparal House was built in 1920 and was occupied by the head of the Laparal clans, Don Roberto and Donna Victorina. But during the Second World War, Japanese soldiers took over the home and used it as a den to severely harm victims. Much like the Laparal House, Behe Napula was used as a base where they inflicted equally inhumane, despicable acts onto women. During the house's Japanese soldier occupation, soldiers would abduct citizens, accuse them of being American spies, and then harm them in every way known to man. The Laparal House is now considered one of the most haunted houses in the Philippines. Caretakers who work at the house have claimed to see headless ghosts dressed in soldiers' uniforms. They've said that they hear doors opening and closing, and some even said that they can still hear the ear-splitting screams and begs from the people who experience torment in the house. The Laparal House has become a popular tourist attraction, drawing visitors who are intrigued by its rich history and supernatural oddities. Despite its strange reputation, the Laparal House stands as a testament to, to Baggio's architectural heritage and continues to fascinate both his history enthusiasts and ghost hunters. Bahe Napula is a deep red house that is labeled as haunted because of the horrendous acts that Japanese soldiers forced onto abducted victims during World War II. At the time, it is said that Filipino guerrillas first used the house as a safe haven, where they would strategize and come together in the trying time. But Japanese soldiers took over the home. They left them without food until they perished. They violated local women without mercy, and they harmed people at random. The house is currently abandoned, but people who live near the area have reported hearing screams and wails calling out for help, and have even seen a group of ghostly Japanese soldiers walking around the house's property. The acts that were committed against innocent people are appalling and heartbreaking. Again, these houses are another example of deeply saddening locations that have become dark tourism attractions. Number two, Ozone Disco. On March 18, 1996, at 11.35 p.m., the Philippines witnessed one of the deadliest nightclub disasters in its history, the Ozone Disco tragedy. The incident occurred at the Ozone Disco, a popular nightclub located in Quezon City, Metro Manila. It was a night that would forever haunt the nation's collective memory, leaving behind a legacy of grief, lessons learned, and calls for stricter safety regulations. That horrific night, the club was packed with hundreds of excited people, celebrating the end of the school year. The nightclub had gained a reputation for its trendy music and vibrant atmosphere, which drew a young and energetic crowd. The tragedy unfolded when an electric malfunction led to a massive fire which spread rapidly throughout the disco. The nightclub's inadequate safety measures exacerbated the situation. There was only one narrow exit. The club was at least 300 people over capacity and the club itself did not have adequate emergency exits. As the flames engulfed the nightclub, screams for help filled the air. People clamored to locked doors, ending up in piles as the hot blazes tore at their skin. Tragically, 160 62 lives were lost that night, and countless others suffered injuries. Families were torn apart, and the nation was left in mourning. 
The ozone disco tragedy serves as a grim reminder of the importance of stringent safety standards in public establishments. The aftermath of the ozone disco tragedy prompted widespread outrage and calls for accountability. Investigations revealed a shocking lack of adherence to fire safety regulations and building codes. The nightclub's owners were subsequently charged with criminal negligence, and several government officials faced disciplinary actions for failing to enforce safety standards. The tragedy also led to significant changes in the Philippines' approach to fire safety and building regulations. It prompted the government to revisit and strengthen existing laws, ensuring that public establishments adhere to safety standards more rigorously. Moreover, the disaster prompted greater awareness among the public about the importance of fire safety and the need for responsible business practices. The ozone disco tragedy is a painful chapter in the Philippines' history, but it has not been forgotten. Each year on March 18th, memorial services and remembrances are held to honor the victims and reflect on the lessons learned. The tragedy serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of negligence and the critical importance of prioritizing safety in public places. The abandoned disco has since been boarded up. You cannot legally enter the building where such a tragedy occurred. People who have managed to disregard the public trespassing laws have described hearing the screams of victims, a clawing at the door, and the faint sound of crackling music, sounding as though the notes themselves were burning into ash. Number one, Manila Film Center. The Manila Film Center is an iconic and controversial structure. It stands as a symbol of both the Philippines' aspirations in the world of cinema and the dark shadows that sometimes loom over the industry. Located on the long shore of Manila Bay, this controversial building was constructed as a venue for the 1982 Manila International Film Festival, an event that planned to showcase both Filipino and international cinema. However, the story behind its construction and the subsequent events have left a permanent mark on the country's history. It was built during the regime of the then President Ferdinand Marcos, and the construction of the Manila Film Center was surrounded by secrecy and controversy. To meet the tight deadline for the festival's opening, an estimated 4,000 workers were employed, working round the clock hazardous conditions. Tragically, a portion of the building collapsed on November 17, 1981, burying several workers under the rubble, still alive. At the demand of the government to expedite the center's completion, the workers' bodies, alive and dead, were covered in cement and left entombed within the structure. Despite this tragedy, the Manila Film Center still opened its doors on January 18, 1982, with much fanfare. It became a hub for film enthusiasts and filmmakers, hosting international film screenings and competitions. And most of them had no idea that they were standing on top of a mass grave. However, the controversy surrounding its construction continued to haunt the venue. Rumors of paranormal activities, particularly ghosts of the workers who lost their lives during the construction, further fueled the Manila Film Center's infamy. In the years that followed, the Manila Film Center faced challenges, including changes in ownership and management. It fell into disrepair and was largely abandoned, becoming a dilapidated and spooky relic of the past. Various proposals for its renovation and revitalization were put forward, but none of them came to fruition. Despite its troubled history, the Manila Film Center remains a significant piece of architectural heritage in the Philippines. In recent years, there have been renewed efforts to restore and repurpose the building. Some have suggested transforming it into a cultural and art center, while others see its potential as value for events and expeditions. Or others see its potential as a venue for events and exhibitions. The government has the government has even received and reviewed applications for the renovations and proposals for the building's future. There's no memorial dedication for the workers that lost their lives, and the government does not accept the blame or take responsibility for the tragedy that occurred because of their impatience. Many people travel from all over the world and country hoping to catch a glimpse of the ghosts of fallen workers.